Hello, it's Carrie Cordy. It's Monday, November 28th, and I am here at the ocean. Yay. Yesterday was a fucked up day. I posted that video with about that guy. Uh, what I didn't know then when I made the video, but I knew when I uploaded it was the guy... The reason he didn't come to my trailer when he came back was because he had left a note on my car. And the people at the store that I went to still call me Sam, my birth name, or as my friend says, my dead name. I love that. And so um, this guy was behind me in line and so he overheard the the people at the store using my dead name and so the note that he left had that name at the top and he was you know the note mentioned how beautiful my cat was my cat was in the window but i can't help but thinking that was a tongue-in-cheek pussy joke um you know yada 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 it ends you know name number and it ends with you know like hey let's party or you know party up or some shit like that and it fucking creeped me out. And so I went over to my friend's house and, you know, I was shaking and, you know, he really was there for me when I needed somebody. And he lives real close by. And God, I need that. Especially that he cares so much about me that he was furious. He was furious. He has the note. And, you know, that's just in case something happens to me. There's this guy's name and number. And that shit really worries me. It was nice to know that it was someone that wasn't obsessed with me from my, like, channel here. And I don't know where they saw me, where they knew me from, because when he was at my trailer yesterday morning, I hadn't left my place since, like, 5, 4 the previous day. And so he was outside of my trailer right as I was leaving in the morning. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. How did he know where I live? How did he know when I was going to be leaving? Was he watching me? How long has he been watching me? What the fuck is up with this? That's creepy fucking shit. Especially when he was behind me at the store and then followed me out of the store. You know, aren't you going to fucking say something? You know, when you were talking to me outside of my trailer, as creepy as that fucking was. What the hell is up with that shit? That's fucking creepy. God. And if I was a man, that wouldn't have happened. It would have been completely different. You know, it's like I told the guy at the store this morning, you know, and he, he's like, no, I would have just said straight up, fuck you, fuck off, get out of here, you know? I got my son inside, fuck no, get away from me. And that's the difference between being a guy and a girl, is, is there's no real comparison for for that, is because it's a, coming from a woman, unless she was, you know, some fighter, big, you know, whatever you know it, it it wouldn't be a big deal wouldn't be a problem that's different so you know looking and feeling more feminine and not having the muscle mass that i used to i was helping a friend do an installation with some things in his car and i had to get him over to help get a screw out because it was too tight that was a first that was a first for me and so I'm so much more comfortable with, my, with myself. I love myself so much more. But there's that fear side, and it's something that was talked about and addressed with, with books and blogs and stories I read from other trans people, other male to female trans people. And I understood it when I read it, but now I know firsthand what it feels like. I know what that feels like now and with a lot of other things in my life I am amazed at the broad spectrum of things I know what feels like but I am grateful I don't get lost in superior thinking of hubris that I know so I am better No, because that's not the lesson in life for me. Knowing does not make me better. Knowing gives me compassion, understanding, and love. 
all of us trans people and, and gender variant people, queer, whatever you want to say, lesbians, gays, bisexual, everybody that, that's not in some kind of conforming category. You know, we show that all of their definitions doesn't come from anything concrete. We show the world that there is so much more, that there's a foundation to life that wasn't the foundation they were building from. And that's a shock. And I keep coming back to scripture and all this other shit where God's like, yeah, I told you this from the beginning. And then I waited. And continually throughout history, whether it's science, religion, anything, anything. You know, I want to say politics too, because it's not politics. It's just the way societies and groups of people have been run, even that. All of these things have been built upon sand and uncertainty. Because, you know, the, the gays ruining the family unit when it supports it. You know, if you think that this ruins a family unit, then you are fucked up. It tears the family unit apart because it brings a line in the sand, a line, and it's in sand, it's not in rock. You made the line in the sand and it was easy to make. And so you get torn away from your family. And religion is the same fucking way. They teach, we are right, we know the right. Follow us or you're going to hell. And whatever level of compassion you have in there and however you twist those words, if that's your core, then fuck you. That is horrible. And growing up as a Mormon, I got a really unique perspective on this. Because Mormons are all about the family. You know, families are forever. Family eternity. Family God. Family love. All this shit. Family's real fucking heavy and it's pushed real hard in the Mormon religion. But their stance on the LGBTQ com community is horrible. Utah, Salt Lake City has one of the highest teenage homeless LGBTQ community. The highest. And so you have a group of people that has drawn this line in the sand for no good fucking reason that tears them away from their own family, brings horrible judgments. And there is no honor in that. There is no honor in that. And people try to justify their love and what love is and where it comes from. But anytime you have to justify something, you're just admitting you're wrong. A mother doesn't need to justify her love, but a politician does need to justify the vote he made. Or the person up there on the pulpit needs to justify that hate that they just put across and that guilt that they put off on people on this bullshit minor fucking thing making people think that anything bigger than not reading the scripture every fucking day and saying praise Jesus constantly anything bigger is just unimaginable because those little things are the are the big fucking sin so anything bigger is unimaginable and that keeps control through guilt fuck the guilt fuck those people I'm just kind of rambling and ranting right now because it's been a pretty nice day. I don't know where my rent's going to be coming from. I have nowhere to get that money right now. I don't have a job and I have nothing I can sell but my body to get the rent. And my rent is due a week before Christmas. My Christmas present might be homelessness. I have a trailer. But I might not have anywhere to put it. This is the time of year to turn away from the store and turn to your neighbor. Turn to that person 
with the broken expression, the resigned look of no hope. Turn away from the store and turn to what's really important. Turn to what you would if suddenly society crumbled. What would be important then? Live your life if that's what's important now. Well, I'm probably running out of space. I really need to get an expansion card for my phone. But, you know, when you're really poor like me, there's things you have to do without. Until next time. Again, and as always, thank you for watching.